words. Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're on the very bottom line, really the last word on the second to last line of Dalit of Aleph. And as you scan over the next blot and a half, you'll see that we have some ground to cover. We'll be stopping about three-fourths of the way down on Hamid Bays at the two dots. And let's jump right in. Uh, we had spoken about a case of uh, Plimo, this shita of defining stira. What is considered the amount of time when a woman is alone with a man after she's been warned, where it puts her into the category of sota? And we saw a bunch of shitas at the top of the page and a, a seemingly conflicting brisa toward the middle of the page. And now we are still analyzing that. Plimo had said, Omer, kikar. The amount of time it takes to remove a bre move bread from the basket. Was it something that was difficult to remove or not difficult to remove? Was it bechadata or be'atika? Was it with new bread or was it with old bread? Newer bread, uh, new, newer basket, excuse me. Was it a newer basket or an older basket? Well, the newer baskets, they still have splinters on them. You have to be a little bit more delicate. Bechamima or bechira, was the bread hot or was the bread cold? Turning to the top of dalad and base. Bedechite or bedesare, was it... Um, was it wheat bread or was it barley bread? Rashi, top of the page. What page is it? Top of Dalit Amid Beis, top line. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So, the Sare, Rashi here says, Shalchit and Chalak, when you make bread out of wheat flour, the bread is more uh, is more, is more smooth. Birakicha ove akusha, or was it a softer bread or was it a firmer bread? Take to all of these questions. Again, we're trying to figure out the parameters by when we assume the sestira, we don't really know the details. All of these differences of opinion that we see in the in the ver multiple brises that are on Dalit and Madalif in regards to what stira is and how we should measure it, it's all based on their own personal experience with what kedei ha'arua means. How long does it take for this minimal penetration to take place? That's the definition of stira. As we pointed out yesterday, there is no ritsui factored in. It's not a question of is she interested or is she not? It's conceptual in regards to how long it takes for a person to bring about a scenario of Ha'ara. Says the Gemara, this is everyone is measuring from their own experience. That's a problem. Because what was one of the names that we saw? We know that Ben Azai never married. So how could it be that Ben Azai is telling us that he had this assumption of what Ha'ara is? He was never married. Says the Gemara, first of all, really he was married, but he got divorced. He, never, he wasn't his own shita that he was quoting, but rather the shita of his Rebbe. This is a lofty level where Kodesh Baruch Hu gifts uh, the tzaddikim, they gift the righteous people extra knowledge. So Hashem, the secrets are given to those who fear Kodesh Baruch Fine. Rav Avira was the one who said it. We just don't know if it was from Rav Ami or Rav Asi. Oh my gosh, what a strong comparison. A person who eats bread without natila yadaim, it's as if they were intimate with an isha zona, which is, a, again, very sharp. We see in the Pasuk that the woman is referenced in isha zona and a kikar lechem. Oh my Rava, that's really not the way the Pasuk should read. We are about 10 lines down on Dalad Amid Beis. Hi, the way the Pasuk is written now is ba'ad isha zona ad kikar lechem. But according to the way you wanted to understand it, the Pasuk should have been reversed. Ba'ad kikar lechem ad isha zona. That should have been written the other way if that's what you wanted to learn. Mi boile, that's what should have been said. El Amar Rabbi, you're right. Kol abal isha zona, l'sof mavakesh kikar lechem. The right way to understand this Pasuk is anyone who is mezana with an isha zona, anyone who sleeps with a woman who's an isha zona, soon he will be b'mavakesh uh, kikar lechem. He'll have to seek out bread. Amr of Zrika, Amr of Yelazar, call him Azazel ben Natila Sadaim Nekar Mina Olam. Anyone who belittles the mitzvah of Natila Sadaim, they are removed from the world. Amr of Chia Bar Ashi, Amr Rav, Mayim Rishonim Sarch Shia Bia Yodo Lamala, Mayim Achonim Sarch Shia Shbil Yodo Lamata. This is true Lahalacha. When a person washes Natila Sadaim, their hand should be up like this, pointing upwards. So you fill up the cup in your right hand, went all the way to the top. I just complimented my son Yaakov on this on Shabbos because I like, I don't know why, like, I have no patience to fill up the cup. I have a lot of patients in other places. For some reason, filling up the cup, I have no patience. I remove the aerators on all of my faucets. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Yaakov, my son, patient as a I know, that's true. Yaakov, my son, is sitting there patiently on Shabbos, waiting for all the water to go to the top. I, I complimented him. I said, Yaakov, you have so much patience. He's like, the Mepharshim say you get rich when the cup fills up. I'm like, okay, I see you have a, I see you have a, you're planning for your financial future. I, I respect that. And then he made fun of me. He's like, you don't seem the type to not have patience. And that's, that's, that's a side din. But over here, what we're saying is that your hands have to be pointed up. We're going to learn why in a moment. When you wash and tell us that from my your fingers are pointed up. One, 
two, and preferably ad perik hazareh to the wrist. Switch hands, one, two fingers pointing up. But by maya machronim, our fingers are pointed downward so the water drips off. Why is this true? The Gemara says third of the way down, Tanya Namihachi, the Bryce supports this idea. Not yada, when one washes their hands, why do his hands have to be pointed up? Maybe water will go past the wrist. And then if your hands are pointing downward, Remember, the Nitzil HaSiyadayim is to remove Tuma. Mayim Rishonim, before bread. Hold on one second. Before bread, it's for Tuma. So let's say my hands are pointed down and I'm I'm pouring and uh, some of the water goes up here and what comes back down. Well, that, that's not going to be washed twice. And therefore, it's Tameh. So therefore, when we wash Nitzil HaSiyadayim, our hands are up like this and we dry our hands like this also up so that the water doesn't drip back down from our wrists. But when it comes to Mayim Rishonim, we have no such concern. So you don't do like one, one, one? For sure not. No, we're t- this is Nitzil HaSiyadayim by bread. Right. That's what I mean. That's what one, I mean. two. One, two, by bread. Or there are three shitas. If you're a Yemenite, it's one. That's it. And then one on the other one. If you're like the rest of us, one, two, hands up to the wrist. One, okay. two. And if you are Yekish, then it's one, two, three, or Sephardim. One, two, three. I don't know. And then the Sephardim are like, they have a whole religion that we're just unfortunately not a part of, which is sad because they probably have it right and we probably have it wrong. But the Gemara does say over here that that's the din, is that we should make sure our hands are pointed upward. Uh, halfway down. Not only washing. Anybody who eats bread without drying their hands, it's as if they're eating bread. That's And prior to this in the Psukim, in, I think it's in Yechezkel. Let me just double check. Yeah, the Pesukim was talking about dirty bread. So the post came ask this Shiloh, wow, how, how far after the washing are you allowed to make the bracha of al nati So I think if someone was Amin writes, it's that as long as your hands are, are in the process of being dried, you're still allowed to make the bracha. That's the niguv is part of the rechitza. The drying is part of the process. You're not, allowed, just tonight, my daughter was about to eat a piece of bread and I'm like, you have to dry your hands. <laughs> in today's daf, this is not the day to mess it up. You have to dry your hands. And my kids are like, why is everything always in today's daf? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. It just happens that way. And you should just know my daughter hasn't eaten bread in years. Mom, she doesn't eat bread. So my son said, I'll give you 30 bucks if you eat a piece of bread. She's like, no problem. So my daughter washes it. And she's like, how do you do this? I'm like, okay. She never, Mom, she never eats bread. today. I'm like, ah, today's daf, dry your hands. That's what the Gemara says. Now, we saw one Pasuk. What's the rest of the Pasuk? That if there's an Eshes Ish, the Nefesh Yikara Tatsud, then the precious soul seemingly will be trapped. Anyone who has Gaiva, anyone who is a Baal Gaiva, they are going down the path and soon they will violate the Yisrael of Eshes Ish. And now are quoting our Pasuk, an Eshes Ish will trap a Nefesh Yikara. Here, it seems from the context, that a nefesh shikara is about gaiva, which is a little bit of an odd presentation. Omar Rava, hi nefesh shikara. You're calling someone who's about gaiva nefesh shikara. That means precious. It should say nefesh gavoa mi baile. The pasuk is wrong. Odin, furthermore, hi titzod mi baile. The language in the pasuk, the, the, the grammar isn't correct either because it seems to be that it's her that's trapping titzod, she, which seemingly is not what was intended, but rather his gaiva. Omar Rava, last of the short lines, two thirds of the way down, kolabal eshes ish, afilu lama Torah. If a person it has violated the Isra of Eshes Ish, even if they're learned. And in regards to Torah, what do we know? The learning Torah is more precious than pearls. Even what we are doing right now, sitting and learning Torah on a Monday night, is more chashuv than the Kohen Gadol being nichnas lefnai v'lifnim. We learn Masech Yoma, we try to figure out every single footstep of the Kohen Gadol. Were the curtains this way? Was it one wall? Was it two walls? We debated and debated and debated. And it doesn't hold the candle to what we're doing, which is simply sitting and learning, which is a givaldic reminder. Sometimes in the hum, we forget how givaldic it is. And Baruch Hashem, it's greater than the coin. And even if that's true, even if it's true, if a person is lama lifnai v'lifnim, they're that they're kilu lifnai v'lifnim, but you you are you are mezana with an eshes ish. So then he sits with the dinner shel gehenna. You can be the biggest tzaddik you want. Eshes ish is a big deal, and you will be called to din in gehenna. 
Amr of Yochanan, two lines into the wide lines, Mishim Rishim Ben Yochai, Kolon Shesh Bogas Yisrach, Kilo Ovid Avodas Kochavim, well known Gemara, that a person who is haughty, it is as if they have worshipped other idols. Ksiv Hacha. In our case, it says, Tovas Hashem called Gubalev, that it's abominable for a person to have a lofty heart. And we'll see Hasam. And elsewhere, it says, we both to be Toeva Al Besecha, referring to Avodas Zar. So Toeva in both cases, Toeva by Gas Yisrach, Toeva by Avodas Kochavim. Rav Yochanan Dide, he himself was of the opinion, because it said over here that Rav Yochanan was quoting Rav Shim Ben Yochai. Now, Rav Yochanan Dide, what did he say? Amar Kilu Kafar Beikar. Person is going to be Gasa Saruach, it's uh it's a Gilui Milsa that you really don't believe in a Kodesh Baruch Shnama When a person has a, has a lofty heart, when they think it's too much of themselves, then they forget a Kodesh Baruch Hu. After all, who is in charge? Rabbi Chama Barchanina Amar Kilu Ba Al Kol Ha'Arayos. That when a person is Gasa Saruach, it's as if they were intimate with all of the Arayos. Ksiv Hacha Tov Bas Hashem Kol Balev. That it's abominable to be to have a lofty heart. Ksiv Hasam Ki Es Kol Atoy Vosa El. When a person is uh, has a uh, has a, a if they have, if they're haughty if they have a haughty of the heart it's as if they've slept with all of the the arayos ula amar ki lubana bama it's as if you built an, an inappropriate uh, mizbeach where do we see this from shenam archadu lachem minada mashon neshama ba'po ki bame nechshavu bame is going to be a play on words al tikri bame el bama so let's look back in the pasuk if you have a person ashur neshama ba'po ki bama nechshavu he's considered like a bama that was what ula was trying to say. What about the rest of that pasuk? My yad yad lo yinakeh, from hand to hand you will not be cleansed. Amar Rav Kol, and these next words need to change too. Kol sheyesh bo gasus ruach, because we're not talking about eshes ish right now. Anyone who has gasus ruach, afilu hikne ula kodesh baruch hu shemayim varz kavram avinu. Even if you uh, proclaim out loud that a kodesh baruch hu is the one who created shemayim varz like Avram did, to chsiv be about about Avram and said harimosi. Yodi el Hashem el Elyon konesh shamayim v'aretz. Even if you are that person, you're a bal guy. But say, but don't worry. I know Kadosh Baruch Hu runs the world. Don't worry. Still, you are lo yinakem yidina shel gehet. The Gemara says that the language is not right. Four lines from the bottom. Kashil hula debe rav shila. What's wrong? It shouldn't be high yad liyad lo yinakem. It should be yadi. If you're quoting from Avraham of Harimosi yadi, and you're saying that's pshat in our pasuk of yad liyad, it should have said yad liyadi. And that's not what it says. Ella, therefore, Amre de Beir of Shila, Filu Kibel Torah, Kemosher Abenu. This is unbelievable. If you're a Baal Gaiva, if we are Baal Gaiva, even if we receive the Torah with the same clarity that Moshe Rabbeinu did, doesn't matter. And even there, you're going to be, you're going to have a din of Gehenim. The Chsiv Bey by Moshe, it says, Mimi no Eshtas Lamo, pure fire. Still, lo yinake me dinu shal Gehenim. You are going to be held accountable in the next world. Kashele the Rebbe Yochanan, he had a problem with the language here. It says, Mimi no, Eish das lamo. It should, it, we said, Hai yad liyad, but really, Yad mi yad, because he received it from a Kodesh Baruch Hu Mibayle. Therefore, El Amar of Yochanan, top of Hamad Aleph, Afilu Oset Tzedakah Beseser, which is one of the highest levels of giving Tzedakah, even if a person gives Tzedakah Beseser, nobody knows who gave, nobody knows who received. Famous Rambam with all the various levels of Tzedakah. Doesn't matter, Dechsiv Matan Beseser Yechafeaf, that a person who gives in private, they are able to quell anger. Still, Afal Pikain, if there's Eshe Sish, if there's Gasus Aruach, Lo Yinakem, Medina Shal Gehenim, you are in big trouble. So we have to make sure, we have to do our very best to be like the earth, which we're going to see a reference to in a minute, and something that we say in Shmon Esrei all the time in the last paragraph of Shmon Esrei. Let's continue. Azhar the Gasa Aruach Minai, we know it's not a good idea, but where is there a formal warning in the Torah? All of these are references and Psukim. Where's the proper Marim Makom? We know there's a bunch of Marim Makom that reference the idea, different Mashalim. All the different things that we saw. But the Maisa, what's the primary source for this Isser of Gasus Aruch? You should not have a, uh, you should not be haughty. And both are the same idea. 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 Both are And what do we see over here? Pen tishkach. And therefore, if we see pen tishkach, pen is always a losa say. So seemingly from the Gemara. Uh, yeah, double. It was the third one. I don't know what it's double. It's two. I'm saying that one possible. Ishamer pen and al. Right. That possible is two of the three. I, I only noticed the pen. That's so funny. Thank you. What's the third one? Is a, is the third one referenced? Let's just make sure we're being thorough. No, it doesn't have to be all three. It's usually, it's usually one. one. Here's actually two. actually have two. Yeah, I was looking at the rest of the psukim to see if we if there was also uh, um, the al. Okay, thank you for picking that up. I missed that. And the Gemara there says, therefore, this is a lo uh, Is that really, is this counted by the Moni Amitzvah? says a lo I have no idea. 
even, even though I don't know the answer to that, I, I think we still do know that. Uh, by, this is like a focus for me in the morning when we say, Lolami Hadam, but like the difference between us and like a pastrami, it's very small. <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, it's a little, but it's a little jarring. Yeah. Meanwhile, we, the, the chashivas, we give Romanian pastrami is more than we give ourselves, I presume. So that's what the Gemara says, uh, is that it's a, uh, it's a lo sase. Dara Shabavira, Zemna Namar Alabit Mushmed Ravasi, Vizemna Namar Alabit Mushmed Ravami. Second time we've seen this, Rav Avira must have learned under both Ravami and Ravasi. What did he say? Kol Adam Sheshbo Gasas Rech, Lesof Mismait. Anyone who is Gasas Rech, they're, they're haughty of the heart. In due time, they will be lowered. Shnemar uh, Romo Me'ati will be lowered. Vashem Atom Ayashno Ba'olam. Ah, is he going to still have a place in the world if he's a Baal Gaiba? No, Tamalom Rav Einenu. But what if he does tshuva? He will be he'll be able to have a long life, just like Avram Avinu did. Shenemar v'humchu when he lowers himself, then kichol yikpetzun. Kakol means like all, and we know bakol mikol kol, right? The language of Avram means chakin Yaakov. Ki Avram means chakin Yaakov. Duchsibu bakol mikol kol. So therefore, you can do tshuva. Be'im lab if you don't do tshuva. Uchoroshi bole simlu that you're going to be like the withering tip of a uh, of a grain of wheat. My uchoroshi bole. What's the head of the shibole? Machlokes Rafun of Rabchiza. Chad Amar. One is talking about if you can picture the top of, uh, of a stalk of grain, there's like these small little things like protruding from the side on a slight angle on each side. That's what we're talking about here, the little bristles. No, it's just the whole sheath of the grain. I understand the first approach that says we're talking about the little bristles at the top of the grain. That's found at the top of the shibolas. But if you're talking about the whole stalk itself, we don't cut the stalk at the top. We usually cut it at the bottom. The roshi bolas is not where the cutting is done. The cutting is done closer to the ground and not by the end of the grain. That if there uh, is a field that's filled with grain and there's some grain that's four feet tall and some grain that's two feet tall, we cut the tops of the four foot grain first. We even it out and then we go back and we are going to continue cutting and therefore both of the shitas are acceptable. The Pasuk says a third of the way down at the two dots, that person who, who is depressed and lowly. Uh, one is that a Kodesh Baruch who brings the depressed per- what? Depressed? Daka literally means crushed or depressed. In modern day Hebrew, dikaon is depression. That is means lowly. It means lowly people. It means, uh, yeah, people who are crushed. It's probably yeah. better. It's a bad thing. We also uh, also to be depressed. Uh, half our country is depressed. <laughs> so, so. I, I just spoke this week. We're doing a big project in May for the OU. Just spoke with uh, Dr. Norman Blumenthal from OHEL. I was talking to him and two other, one or two other people in his office. I said, what is the biggest clinical issues you guys are seeing as clinicians in the world? Two things. They both nodded in full agreement. I'm, a, I'm an Amba Aretz here. Anxiety is everywhere mm-hmm. and hopelessness. Uh, in our culture, those are one and two, and they're inextricably, almost always inextricably bound. Not always. You can be hopeless and not feeling anxious about it, but Rubo Kakulo, a lot of them are, I asked them, I'm like, are these connected? They're like, not always, but often they are. So we're going to do a program partnership with them where we're focusing on anxiety with Norman Blumenthal. It's going to be, oh, these are our problems in our generation. Anxiety medications are through the roof and we need it, apparently. Okay. Anyways, this lowly person, Machlokes, Chad Amar Iti Daka, Kodesh Baruch Hu says, the person who's crushed is going to be brought up to me. Chad Amar Ani Es Daka. Uh, I'm, that's a little bit of a hard language here, but what it means is that a Kaddish Baruch Hu goes down to the poor person. So which one is it? Does the does the Kaddish Baruch Hu bring the poor person up to him or does Hashem go down to greet the poor the person who is crushed? That a Kaddish Baruch Hu goes to that person. What's the precedent for this? When it came to Kabbalah Zator, there were many mountains that were larger. We didn't uh, look at all the big mountains that we know about today that people are trying to scale all the time. But Lamaisa, the, the Torah was given on a shuffle. Torah can only be given on a shuffle. That's a mushal for us as well. If we want to be able to be to absorb Torah, we have to have a certain humility and recognize that we don't know everything. So that's what the Gemara says. Rav Yosef, we really should learn from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu, Nech Kol Har Mugvos, Vishwa Shchinas Val Har Sinai, that a Kodesh Baruch Hu would put his Shchina on a small mountain. Uh, we don't always have to be in the most fancy of, of environments. We can be more simple. And we'll, this time we'll read the parentheses. He picked a bush in order to show the nace that uh, the bush is burning. So all of these nisim happen with smaller things. And that's learning from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, that we can have relatively normal homes. Not everything has to be so simple. I know someone in the community, fantastically wealthy individual, and uh, the shirts are 
are coming off at the edge. The car is from the late 90s. Pashtun Yid. It's just a Pashtun Yid. It's, a, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Very nice. Okay. That's what the Gemara says, is that we need to make sure that uh, we are like a Kaddish Baruch Hu and that we're able to uh, bring ourselves to those who are in a lower place. A person who is a Baal Gaiba, they should be cut down like an Asherah, like an Avodah Zorah tree. Both of them are the same. Those people who think so highly of themselves and the Asherah tree, they're equivalent. Wow. Shem Yerachim, that if a person is a Baal Gaiba, then their dust will not move during the times of Tchia Samesim. We're going to discuss that a little bit at the bottom of the page. I'm greater than you, but that is like... That, well, the machlokas be between... Adam, so yeah. the shot is, I'm even greater than you. Then, then, but if... You have to feel, you the have pshat to feel is not. It's not that I'm greater than you. The pshat is that I'm great. It's not that I'm greater than you. I am great. I, I'm amazing. And yeah, I'm amazing, and therefore I should. I should motivate myself to do more. I've spoken to my rabbi about this extensively, and not, I don't really, we don't really have time for this, but it's a really big issue. No, 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 no. I'm going to say it now because it's important. It should be recorded. One of my rabbi said that in our generation. We are emotionally so insecure and unstable that we should not focus too much on humility because we're not good at threading the needle on what it means to be an honor. This is what you said. It's not about depression. It's not about being crushed. It's about knowing that your kochos are not yours. They come from somewhere else. You are provided with whatever tools you have. You have no control over what tools you have and what tools you don't have. I'm good at some things and I am not good at other things. It's just what it is, but we're not good at threading that needle. And he cautioned at the big, big, big push of becoming Mr. Humble. It doesn't mean we don't have an avoda here. We just have to be careful in our avoda. He was kind of cautioning. So that's what the Gemara says, that, that our Rahman al that the dirt after a person dies, that the dirt won't be moved. If we're a gasos or when we're alive, then that's a big problem. It doesn't say those who are resting in the afar, ela shochne afar, shechne afar, those who are neighbors with the dust. What does that mean? A person who makes themselves a neighbor of dirt when they are alive. This is the Pasuk we say, and it's not a Pasuk, the Tvila that we say, My nefesh should be like the Afar. Why? Because if my nefesh is like the Afar, then I'll be Zochet to Tchiyas HaMesim. We should put a little chukchik in our notes and our in our sitter. This is our, our one of our daily reminders that we want to be a part of the good side of history and not a part of the bad side of history. When a person is Gasa Saruach, Kodesh Baruch Hu is wailing about that person. Darash Rabbi Rabbi Tamer Rabbi Lazar Bo Reish Look at me as a Kodesh Baruch Hu Midas Basar V'Dam A Kodesh Baruch Hu is different than people Midas Basar V'Dam When we're talking about people Gvo Roes Agvo People who are of a very high stature They see others who are like them and a very high stature But Vein Gvo Roes Ashafal But those who are super great They don't appreciate lowly people They don't appreciate people who are in lesser circumstances than they are But Midas Kodesh Baruch Hu Okay, Kodesh Baruch Hu is not like that Who Gvo Roes Ashafal Kodesh Baruch Hu is tremendously great Obviously he doesn't need our accolades But he's able to see those who are more or lowly. Remember, he came down to Har Sinai. He came down to the Sne, smaller trees, smaller mountains. Kodesh says, you and I can't share this space. I can't be in the same place as you. As the Pasuk says, that I will destroy that person. And not that and this, let's read that second half of the Pasuk again. Gvai naim a person with big eyes, a person with a big heart. Ito lo uchal. I can't be with that person. That's the taich in the Pasuk. And Ika demasne that this Pasuk is really not talking about Gvai naim, but rather demasne la amesapre lashonar, because the Pasuk says, um, it's talking about shenemar mal shenei basesa reyu so atzmit. So the Pasuk is seemingly talking about lashonar, but the first approach uh, understood that Pasuk as Gova Lev, and the second approach to understood it as lashonar. These people are super fragile. We know this to be true. The people who are big Bala Gaiva are the most insecure people in the room, bar none. It's always like that. And the tiniest little insult that comes in their direction, they can't handle, handle it all. It's going to anger them, the tiniest little thing. 
Shenemar bar Hashem ki yam negrash. What is it about a yam and a rasha that are similar? Uma yam she yesh bo kama revios. There's a lot of water. And ruach kima ocharto. And when it's windy out, you can have massive waves. You can create a ripple. Says the Gemara. Adam shein ba levias achas. We only have a little bit of blood in our bodies. Alachas kama vekama. Of course, we're going to be super fragile. So it's usually that's the case. When you see someone who's super fragile, they uh, they also usually also ba legaiva. They try to build themselves up. It usually doesn't work. It doesn't work. Amar uchia barashi amar amar rab. Amidi chachamim. This is a little bit jar. What you were talking about before. Tzarech she hebo echad mishmona bishminis. You need an eighth of an eighth of, of gasus haruach. So people shouldn't push you around. You have to have a spine. You have to be strong enough to stand up to people. You have to make sure you're not, uh, you know, bending over backwards for the rich and not helping the poor. Like that's not nice. You have to have a little bit. You can't be thrown around. There's a rav. You have to be treated properly. So if you're a talmud chacham, you need to have a little bit of gaiva. Amar Afun the bread of Yeshua uma'atrale. A little bit of a reference to the earlier Gemara that we saw. It's a little bit of this accolade that just like the, the wheat on the top has the shibolas, the bristles that are sticking out on the right and left side, protruding at a slight upward angle, that would be similar to what the what the Talmud Chacham is like. He holds himself in a certain regard. And, it, and if you don't do a good job, he'll be put into cherem if he has too much of it. And he'll also be put into cherem if he doesn't have enough. Again, it's, very, it's a hard space to live in. It is a hard space to live in. Amar Rav Nachman, Bar Yitzchak, I disagree. Lo minav, lo miktsasa. You, as a Tamil Chacham, should be afar mamish. You should have no gaiva at all. Mi zutar dichsi batovas Hashem kol gvaleiv. How much more ammunition do you need when the Torah calls it abominable? You're like, I'll take an eighth of an eighth. That's completely incongruent. It, it either is okay or it's not okay. There's no two ways about it. If you want to work on your davening, a person has to if they want their, uh, uh, ain't. the only way your tefillah is going to be heard is if you treat yourself like basar, basar as opposed to adam. Basar is soft, adam is hard. When we talk about a, people approaching a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's yavo kol basar, not adama. Amar of Zera, basar ksiv bavinirpa, by basar we have, and there is healing, but we don't have that. Adam lo ksiv bavinirpa, therefore we should approach a Kodesh Baruch Hu as basar and not as adama. And the Gemara says, Amar of Yochanan, adam, what do the letters of adam stand for? Uh, it's afer, dam, and mara. We're talking about afer is ashes, dam is blood, mara is bile, things that break down food. And what about basar? Basar is busha, srucha, rima, not kishmak. Uh, busha is embarrassment, srucha is something that stinks, and rima is uh, rima vetole. It's uh, things that are, huh? Yeah, it's disgusting. And Ika de Amri, that the shin in Basar isn't srucha, because that's actually a sin, but rather Sheol, which is the bottomless pit of Gehenna, Bishin. That's actually written with the letter shin instead of, oh, or should we sin? But uh, yeah. Amar Abashi, last line on Hey Amar Aleph. Kol Adam Sheesh Bogasu Saruach, Lesof Nifchas, he's going to become lowered. Shin Amar, as we turn to the top of Hey base, we're going to go about two thirds, maybe three fourths of the way down. The Pasuk says, in regards to Tsaras, that says for the Sapachas. Normally, we translate these as different types of uh, Tsaras. But here the Gemara says, Vein the Shorash of Seis is to bring things up, to elevate. Which is a raised up mountain. Vein Sapachas, the language of Sapachas, again, which we typically refer to in regards to Tsaras, but here it's being used as. A sniff, it's a secondary thing. Attach me on to one of the kohanim. I'm secondary. So therefore, if there's seis, then you'll be sapachas. If there's an elevated stature in yourself, then you will become second. How wonderful are the people who are lowly before a Kodesh Baruch Hu. In the times when the Beis HaMikdash was around, if a person would bring an Ola, that's what he would be rewarded for. If we bring a Mincha, that was his reward. But a person who has a lowly nature to themselves. It's as if you brought every korban available. Shneemar zivche elokim plural ruach nishbara for those who have a broken spirit. Vilood not only that but you're also guaranteed if you are a shafal ruach el shein tefilas oni meses your tefilas will never be deemed disgusting. Shneemar live nishbara v'nit ke elokim lo sivze kadosh baruch hu will not be mevaze your tefilas. Anyone who is some or chosav who places his path in this world, so the Gemara says, uh, then he will see the Yeshua of Kodesh Baruch Hu. What is some or chosav? Take a look at Rashi, eight lines down from the top. Some or chosav. 
that we've seen this before and elsewhere. Mechashev hefsed mitzvah keneged schara. Notice what this is not talking about. It's not talking about averas. It's talking about mitzvos. So let's read it again. Mechashev hefsed mitzvah. If I loot, I'm measuring my loss for doing a mitzvah against the schar for doing a mitzvah, which is a very positive outlook on things. And that will bring a Kodesh Baruch Hu to be, bring us to see, to be Zoha Barab Yeshua Sashal Kodesh Baruch Hu Shneemar, the Sam Derecher Enubi Yashal Okim, those who place themselves on the path, they'll see the salvation of a Kodesh Baruch Hu and Al Tikri Visam Ela Visham Derech. Nice play on words. Halfway down at the two dots, about 12 more lines to go. The Gemara says, Ketzad Mekana, we had said in our Mishnah on Dah Beis, we had spoken about what Kinu is. Our Mishnah said to Al Tadabrim Ish Plani, where a husband says to his wife, I know I'm, I, I'm catching a vibe here. From now on, you may not speak to this person, person X, whoever they may be. So says the Gemara, Hagu Fakasha, we have a problem. Amris, you said in our Mishnah that the definition of kinui is Omar la bifne shnayim. The husband says to the wife in front of two people, Al Tadabrim Ish Plani, I don't want you talking to this person anymore. Alma, what does that imply? Dibur stirahu, that the language is proper language of stira, meaning it's bond, binding language, something really happened. But Bahadur Tani, but then the Mishnah writes that Dibra Imo, Adain Mutars the base, Mutars Lechobachuma. You're right that Kinui is part of the process. Kinui, stira, nitma. I understand. But seemingly the Kinui really didn't matter. Alma Dibur Lav Klumi, Lo Klumi. So therefore, Amar Avaye, no, Hachikama, we need to have a uh, correct shot here. Al Tadabri, if a husband says to the wife, you're not allowed to speak to this person, and Vidibra, and she spoke to him, or she says, he says to her, Al Tadabri, don't speak to this person, and Vinista Ravalo Klum, and they were alone, but nothing else happened, supposedly. Or Al Tistari, Vidibra Imo, and or she says Al Tistari instead of Al Tidbri, don't be alone, and she spoke to him. In all of these cases, Adain Muteris la Besa, Umuteris la Batruma. However, if, in fact, this woman after Kinui went into a private room with this man and she was with him, which, we, as we've described, is a very short amount of time, the amount of time for there to be ha'ara, then asur lebesa of asur lecho betruma. But that wouldn't have happened without the Kinui. You're right. The Kinui in and of itself won't limit the woman from being uh, being able to be with her current husband. But if she goes into stir b'chdei tuma, then she's a sota, and she's no longer allowed to be alone with her husband. We'll stop right here, about 12 lines or so from the bottom, and pick up a Mir Sashem tomorrow night with a blot and a half. Here is the schedule, just for your own knowledge. Um, today's Monday. So tomorrow night is Tuesday. We're going to do a blot and a half. Wednesday, nothing. Uh, Thursday, blot and a half. No. To even up. Why not Thursday? It's, um, it's in the afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, just like Shabbos. Yeah. Shabbos. Yeah. So we're gonna we're not gonna learn Wednesday, but in order to hop up the extra blot, we're gonna it's like Shabbos. So we'll do tomorrow night is blot and a half. Thursday is blot and a half, and then we're caught up. Friday and Shabbos one blot each, and then Sun. And then Sunday and Monday are Erev Yontif. I'll do a blot and a half each of those days and I'll figure out the rest of the schedule. But I'll be posting a blot and a half each day, Sunday, Monday. When does Yontif start? Tuesday night? Yeah. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'll do a blot and a half. And then after Yontif, we'll do a blot and a half again. Then we'll be all cut up. Ruvain Handler will be subbing starting on Sunday for those who want in person shiurim. What's after Yontif? What? What's after Yontif? Thursday night or Friday? Um, I'll probably post on Friday. Probably oh, post Friday morning. Yeah. yeah. Well, I sound not. The uh, let's out late. Um, we'll see. I'll see. How, I don't know. See how the learning goes. I have no idea. Maybe we'll do it. Tomorrow. Maybe we'll do it Thursday. I'll keep you all posted. Wishing you all a beautiful night.